Today's lecture is over Chapter 2, Section 1. Objectives number 1, describe the solar system and the Earth's location on it. Number 2, describe the Earth's structure and the forces that create it. So what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at the Earth and we're going to look at the inside of the Earth and the outside of the Earth. Um, when we start looking at geography, geography gets kind of split up into two different types, but they're actually connected together. Uh, the physical part of geography, which would be more like mountains, rivers, plains, plateaus, and then we're going to see the human part of geography, which is going to be more about culture and economics and things of that nature. So what we're looking at is we're looking at basically why things are on the earth and that's what physical geography is, is why things are on the earth and then what we look at is we say okay if things are this way on the earth then how does that affect humans? So humans are going to live near water, humans are going to live away from mountains and so we want to know why things are where they are and then how that affects human beings. Now in the continent there's seven continents on earth that fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. These continents, continents are land masses above the water on the earth. Francis Bacon in 1620 is the first to suggest that there's seven continents that were, were, uh, were once one together. So um, in the last slide we'll talk about Pangea. He's the guy that kind of comes up with that. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at the solar system. Here's a short video. Named after Roman deities, the eight planets of our solar system are remarkable sights to see, whether you're an amateur astronomer or an expert. Mercury, the Romans' messenger god, and Venus, the goddess of love, have phases just like our moon. Since Mercury's orbit hugs close to the sun, it is best observed either before sunrise or shortly after sunset. Venus is the brightest planet in the sky, outshining many stars. Despite its visibility, observers are unable to see any surface detail on Venus due to the soup-like cloud covering that blankets the planet. Named after the god of war, Mars is one of the simplest planets to spot because of its brilliant red hue. The most noticeable features on Mars are its polar ice caps, which are bright white, and Sirtis Major, which is one of the darkest and most massive volcanic features on the planet. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system and its amber hue glows in our night sky. Named after the king of gods, Jupiter has two main belt systems of swirling clouds that are visible with a small telescope, one in the north and one in the south. The great red spot can also be seen along the southern edge of the south equatorial belt. Saturn, the god of agriculture, is visible to the naked eye. But in order to see its ring system, you must observe the planet with a telescope that has a 40 power eyepiece. Uranus and Neptune are much harder to find than the rest of the planets. Uranus, the god of the heavens, has a slight green tint. And Neptune, the god of the sea, has a blue hue. They can be seen using binoculars. Because of its great distance from the sun, dwarf planet Pluto takes its name from the god of the underworld. A 12-inch telescope is needed to see it, but even then, Pluto looks like a tiny star. So those are the um, planets in our solar system. Again, the Earth is the third planet of the solar system. Sun, medium-sized star, uh, right at the edge of the Milky Way galaxy. Now again, the solar system, what does it include? It includes the Sun. Now right here it says nine planets. Um, this kind of dates the notes. The notes are back in around 2000. Um, 
the the discrepancy between that nine planet is that Pluto is actually is it a dwarf planet? Is it a planet? Right now we consider um, we consider Pluto not to be a planet. However, there is some geographical um, associations that are actually trying to get Pluto reestablished as a planet. So uh, it's not going to be on a test or quiz or anything like that. But again, we've got the Sun eight for sure planets and ninth planet of Pluto is kind of in between. We also have comets which are icy spheres orbiting the Sun. And then we also have asteroids, large chunks of rocky material that orbit the sun as well. So that's what our, our solar system kind of includes. Now what we also see is that we see the size. Um, the circumference of the Earth is 24,900 miles. Uh, the diameter of the Earth is about 7,900 miles. It just shows that it's a big planet. But inside the Earth what we're going to see is we're going to see some different things. Now this is an example right here of something that you can actually see from your um, your online book. Uh, this is actually something that we pull from it. And what we can see is it's kind of a good way of uh, kind of an interacting gallery to show the different layers on the Earth. What we see is the very top here is that we're going to go ahead and we're going to see, first of all, you see the continents that are uh, by the oceans, and then you're going to see the continental crust, and right underneath the continental crust is you're going to see the oceanic crust as well. So these are going to go ahead and these are going to combine to kind of uh, form kind of this encrusted area right here. We also see the lithosphere up here um, and, and then that's going to be on top, kind of the top part and then the entire thing is going to be the mantle right there. So this encrusted area right here is going to be something that's really not that thick um, but it's going to go ahead and it's going to give us a lot of different layers. The next layer then is the mantle. We got the upper mantle and the lower mantle and what this is is that this is just another level and then if we look to the inside here we're going to see the core. Um, you go see in the outer core and then the inner core uh, or the iron core and that's going to be something that's going to be, have a, a radius of about 760 miles. So what happens is, is that the core again center of the earth made up of iron and nickel. The outer core is liquid. The inner core is solid. The mantle surrounds the core and has several layers and it contains most of the earth masses. So that's what we're looking at when we're looking at the inside of the earth. Now continuing on inside the earth you're going to see magma. Magma is molten rock that forms at the mantle. Again if magma comes to the surface it becomes lava. Crust then is a thin layer of the rock's earth's surface and that's what we saw with that um, interaction gallery right there. Now what we can also see is we can also see the atmosphere. Now the atmosphere is a layer of gases that surrounds the earth, contains oxygen, protects the earth from radiation and space debris, and it mediates the weather and the climate. So from this drawing right here what we would see is that we're going to see the sun right here give a nice smiley face. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to see the, the sun's rays that are coming down. Now what we have is that we have the earth right here. Now, these rays, if they were to go and they were to hit the Earth without having kind of that protective layer, what's going to happen is that this is going to get really, really warm almost to the point, well, not almost, it would get to the point that you would not be able to have uh, life there because it would be so hot. So what we have to have is that we have to have an area here that is called the atmosphere. And this atmosphere is a protective level right here that sometimes this is going to go ahead and it's going to force the sun rays to bounce off of it. Uh, the, the rays that might be harmful to us. But there are going to be rays that get through there that's going to make it so that this is a comfortable temperature temperature inside the world right here. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking it's a medium from weather and climate. It makes it so that the sun's rays are going to be, um, some are going to bounce off, some are going to penetrate the earth, warm it up and make it so that we can have life. Now, on the and above the Earth, what we see is is that we've got the lithosphere. Litho means rock, so the lithosphere is a solid rock portion of the Earth's surface. This also form, for, uh, forms the ocean floor. We also have a hydrosphere. Hydro meaning water. This is the water elements on the earth. And then finally we have the biosphere. And the biosphere is the atmosphere, the lithosphere, and the hydrosphere combined. And what we see is that plants and animals live within this biosphere. Um, in a, um, animal that is going to be on land is obviously going to need to be on the lithosphere or a little bit more solid portion of the earth but what we see is is that they are going to be also need to be near water or the hydrosphere because they're going to have to be able to live and drink so this is one of those things that just kind of comes together and um, works together 
Now last but not least is going to be continental drift. This is a 1912 hypothesis by Alfred Wagner. Um, what we see is, is that the Earth's once is going to be a supercontinent. Wagner calls it Pangaea or all Earth. And Pangaea is going to split as the plates uh, move slowly past each other. So this idea is really simple. What we can see is that we can see Africa right here that's got kind of got an inland part right there. And then we can see uh, South America kind of outward. And if you went ahead and you took this South America and you put it into Africa, you could probably kind of guess that they would say that that would kind of fit together. Again, this part, portion of North America kind of goes in and then these portions kind of go out. So the idea is pretty simple, is that this continental drift is that these um, massive chunks of continents are actually all formed together. Now the interesting part about it is we are actually seeing these continents move. For example, um, Australia is constantly moving. Now, they're all constantly moving, but we've actually been able to see this over the centuries in Australia it's gradually moving north and so what we see is is that it's moving very little at a time um, and so this continental drift again it is a theory because we can't prove it but it's a very common theory this completes our notes over chapter 2 section 1 please complete your assessments at this time